Catholic Buzz Podcast. Welcome back. My name is Father Daniele, and I'm joined by Josh Sullivan. Hi, Josh. Hey, how are you doing? And Matt Van Milligan. Hello. How are you? I'm doing well. Good to have you guys back here, yeah. and I'm really excited about today's episode because there's just so much crazy stuff going on <laughs> in Germany right now, exactly. right? With the, I mean... In the context of the Catholic Church, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know yeah. culturally or uh, geographically <laughs> yeah, or their politically. TikTok? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but in the context of the Catholic Church right now in Germany, uh, like you know, I I'm uh, not easily scandalized, and you guys know that. Yeah. And uh, but like reading some of the things yeah. that are coming out of Germany uh, in the Catholic Church is uh, is pretty scary and and, and pretty shocking. I, I'm gonna just say that it seems to be. Um, a misconception all around of what exactly, how the church operates, how the church works, how synod works, how, like, what exactly happened there? So, okay, let's get down to the brass yeah, taxes. Okay. So, for, like, and, and, you know, forgive me today because, you know, this sort of situation really irks me, right? So I might get a little testy today in today's episode. <laughs> but uh, so what's basically happening is uh, there's something going on in, in Germany within the, the Catholic Church called the Synodal Way or the yeah. Synodal Way, I Synodal, guess, you know, yeah. however you pronounce that. Uh, basically, it's a discussion process that's underway. Um, and it's... Uh, I think the main goal is to talk about how they're going to live out. I, I think maybe in practice as how they would explain it is how they're going to live out the Catholic faith in today's world and in the future. And this synod includes some bishops, lots of lay people, lots of people from different um you know, areas of life. And it's focusing really on, let's say, um, how the church needs to develop its teaching, especially in the areas of sexuality, exercise of power, which includes the sacraments mm -hmm. and doctrine, church doctrine. So this is really kind of a crazy thing that's happening. You know, I remember, if I may, uh, a couple of years ago, hearing about the beginning of this, thinking it was crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here we are a couple of years later, and, and it's still, still happening. Crazy. Yeah, and I think it's crazy today. Yeah, I think I think <laughs> um, we we talked a couple episodes last year uh, back uh, about um, with Bishop the Bishop came on. He mm -hmm. talked about the Synod on Synodality. And he, yeah, and, he, and this is different from that. In case people are confused, yeah, yeah, and that's we what I was going to say. That. So, yeah. so what what exactly is this Synod on? From my understanding, the bishops were meeting. Um, the bishops were meeting, and they were going to vote on how things are done in Germany. Um, how maybe thing well, and we'll get to the that. And then there was laid. They were referring to the laity uh, so that they could have a, a say in this. But the, the, it was the German bishops that were voting on how the the Catholics in Germany would live out the practice of the Catholic faith. Correct. Yes. Yeah. And so that's kind of what was that was going on in this synodal process, the synodal way, as you will. And this is something that happens in the church, right? This is something that is a regular thing. Yes. So uh, like, I think we need to distinguish between the synod on synodality on the one hand and yeah, kind of what's happening absolutely. in Germany, because I think I, they, again, from the outside, they can kind of have the same appearance. And when Bishop Tom was on, yeah. we, we kind of pressed him a little bit on some of the concerns that people had about the synod on synodality, yeah. um, because it was, you know, eliciting the perspectives of, of the faithful, like yeah. of the people on the ground about like, What's your perspective on how the church engages with this or that or, um, but again, all of that is from the perspective of, you know, the, the universal church saying, how can we engage the world better? Yes. How can, how can we, you know, um, tailor our approach um, to communicating the theology of the church to a way that's relevant to the way that, you know, people, the concerns that people have. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it opens the door to a lot of discussion but a lot of people saying okay if we're eliciting kind of mass opinion on what the what the church should look like or what people are concerned about people are concerned that this is maybe democratizing the church or yes. this is you know we're, we're turning into the church of public opinion yeah um that you know uh, a lot of these um maybe concerns or fears that people have are kind of being manifest in you know, you would say kind of the German synodal path or synodal way, um, which is how you pronounce synodal, um, because it's a single, it's, it's a vowel followed by a single consonant and then another vowel. So that makes the O. I'm so glad yeah. you're so knowledgeable about these things. <laughs> so uh, again, so it, you could say that the, the German synodal path or like these attempts to 
democratize the church or you know change at a fundamental level church teaching is a deviation from that that initial mandate but is also kind of hijacking it and trying to um you know um make it serve political or ideological purposes okay. and yeah and so in the synod what what is the purpose of a synod uh, not, well, not, the, not on the, the synodality the word but, synod itself yeah. just means to um you know, walk in a common direction to journey together. Yeah. Um, and a lot of uh, Pope Francis's initial remarks on when, when he opened this synod in 2019 um, said, like, th this is um, uh, all of our efforts here are directed towards unity, mm -hmm. towards unification. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, you can see, and, and we'll, we'll get into kind of some of the issues that a lot of these departures from the Orthodox theology of the church um, are, you know, uh, possibly heading towards division or schism or sure, you know yeah. achieving the opposite end so with <clears throat> so with this german synodal way um they are the like the official titles of what they want to talk about are power and separation of powers in the church mm -hmm. okay um life in succeeding relationships so living love in sexuality and partnership mm -hmm priestly existence today mm -hmm. and women in ministries and offices in the church so those are the four sort of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. umbrella topics, topics that they are talking about in the synodal way in the church in germany so uh, let's just be clear that this synodal way is is just happening in germany right this this particular conversation that's bringing yeah, it's controversy the yes, synodal, it's, it's yeah. the german and, church right and we should also specify that it's not the whole german church absolutely there are german absolutely. cardinals there are yeah well, yeah um uh, cardinal Mueller has, yes. has been very outspoken uh, about you know that this this is not the proper direction of what a synod should be um uh even even cardinal casper who in previous synods you know, the like the the amazon synod was maybe one of these more um kind of challenging voices has also come out and said like this is this is not the intention yeah the assembly here the synodal assembly only has about 230 members and only about 69 of those are, are german bishops mm -hmm. right yeah. uh, the rest include uh lay people but there's also this um central committee okay of, of german catholics known by the acronym zdk okay and uh they've received a bunch of money millions of euros in funding uh okay uh, to sort of pursue this sort of movement in the church some of the money actually came even from the german bishops conference okay but uh, basically they they have like a number of controversial goals that they're pushing through the synodal way that includes blessing of homosexual unions yeah okay the ordination of women to be deacons okay. getting rid of celibacy yeah um and intercommunion with protestants okay those those are some of the controversial things that they're pushing for um now so so this this synod that they're having on the bishops are trying to figure out like from my understanding when, when we have when we hold the synod or something it's like we have the church teachings of the church let's just say it's on marriage for yeah, instance sure this is not trying to change the doctrine of the church of marriage or how to change uh, what the how the church sees marriage it's it's trying to say how the church teaches marriage now in today's age how the how the church brings the gift and the sacrament of marriage to the people now that would be different and i think we talked about like at one time you might have been like we are we i mean uh, when we're talking about feed the hungry or or helping the sick and those things we're talking about veterans from world war ii at one time you know for instance and now well we don't have the veterans that we had in world war ii in the 50s or whatever the case may be so now we're looking at how do we ha heal the sick or how do we how outreach do, in different outreach ways in different ways exactly so yeah. now we would have a synod to talk about how how can we, what is a pandemic? How can the church step in and teach this um, theology, this this uh, doctrine, if you will, to the people nowadays and or bring this, this life to the church, if you will? Mm -hmm. Not how do we change doctrine in the church? Yeah. Uh, not how do we change the teachings of the church to match the people, right? Is that is that is that and that's the yeah. difference, and that's part of the problem. Yeah, and it it, it becomes kind of again more more complex um, yeah. by the fact that you know the the broader church is hosting this synod on synodality, so yeah. you know seeking the perspectives of people on on these things because each of these items has different you know doctrinal status. So um, something like you know. Um, 
uh, marriage. You know, you can say that that's pretty doctrinally and dogmatically rooted that, you know, men and women, he created them. Yeah. Um, you know, Jesus, his own teacher, like that, that, that is more established than something like priestly celibacy. Yes. So that's that's something that like, you know, if the synodal process says this is something people are concerned about, and it's like the and I've said it before that the, like the church's intellectual philosophical tradition is robust enough that it's not afraid to have that conversation. Yeah, it's not exactly. afraid to say like this is this is a, a discipline within the church. This is how, you know, we can have that conversation with our Byzantine brothers and sisters who, you know, allow married priests it, like that. This is open for conversation. But at the end of the day. We defer to the, you know, the majesty, the proper, you know, teaching and, um, you know, doctrinal instruments within the church. Um, you know, we're not petitioning, petitioning the church to change its policy on something. We're not, um, you know, lobbying the church to, yeah. you know, change with the times or just to follow kind of the this worldly model that, you know, on the one hand, you know, we want to be able to have these discussions so that we can better communicate the teaching of the church to uh, other people. But again, it, it can be hijacked by these political agents exactly. who, who their main objective and is th is to try and undermine and change the, the teaching of the church. Right. And that's exactly what happened. Like, um, because this whole process started in September of 2019. Yeah. Okay, and then of course it was delayed a little bit by COVID and all these things. So, um, you know, in September of this year is when they kind of came together. You know, so uh, for those who don't know, like every time a synod happens, you know, there's periods of gathering and, and discussion, and then there's periods of going and reflecting and, and gathering information or whatever. You know, just kind of like the our synodal process here. Mm -hmm. So in September of this year was one of those gatherings. Okay. And you could see how how turbulent it was, right? Mm -hmm. When when people came when people came together, like there was this like they they had a vote, right? Didn't they? Yeah, they they. they as far as I understand, and yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, there was a vote by the bishops, I, and I believe just the bishops. Yeah, I think there was a vote by the people, but that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> If you know right. what I mean, like they decided, well, we're going to have our own vote because the bishops are going to have their vote. So the bishops had their vote. And it was a secret ballot just basically on the topic of the like expanding blessings to for home. same sex. Exactly. Couples that's, like that's uh, right. relationships, marriages, whatever yeah. unions. Yeah. OK. And it was a it was a secret ballot. Yeah. Now the bishops had voted unanimously, I believe. Yeah. Against it. No, it wasn't unanimous. They needed to have 60 percent of the votes. In order to come, they need to have 60% of the votes in order to make it a topic that they talked about further. Okay. <laughs> I think is what it was. And what they ended up not having, they didn't have that 60%. So it was it kind of like killed the discussion at gotcha. that moment, if that makes sense. Gotcha. Yeah. And so they didn't have the 60% vote. Um, and the people on the ground, if I understand correctly, started like shouting, protesting, protesting loudly. And when they, when they when they announced, okay, so this is kind of dead. Like the, it sounded like, and I think what happened was you had certain people put into certain seats, uh, activists, if you will, to yeah. try to make things happen and and change happen. With the understanding that this is supposed to somehow change the doctrine of the Catholic Church, which is not, not what this thing. is about. That's and, right. and so it was a misunderstanding all the way around that yeah. this is what it's supposed to be. They have a meeting of bishops, and they and, and the understanding, or the misconception, was that the bishops were going to vote and change how the German Catholic Church did things. And that wasn't what this process was meant to do. Anyways... It was brought forward, a lot of talking, a lot of discussion, all that kind of stuff, and then they voted on it. And the understanding was, again, by popular opinion, was that we, the bishops are all going to vote in favor of this blessing and everything else, and then they're going to just say, yeah, we're doing it, and we're going to bring it to the church. That's not what happened. The bishops voted with what the church's teaching was, and, and not all of them. There were people that voted. Sure. Some bishops voted for it, or cardinals or whatever. Um, but they didn't achieve what they needed to. They didn't achieve the majority that they needed to. Then they started to protest. The people that were there, the activists that were there, exactly, started to protest this. And so they started... Criticizing like, the outcome of that first initial vote. Exactly. And the fact that their secret ballots were allowed. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So then, in a, such a ridiculous manner, okay, they... Oh, the day later... Yeah. There was another vote on the same... There was apparently chanting on the floor and stomping of feet and like the whole, I mean, from the witness stories that I heard about from, that were there were like, like floors were shaking because people like, they, they just started protesting. A tantrum. 
basically taking Tanner on the floor. Uh, Cardinals got up and just left because like there's there's obviously not discussion here. This is mm-hmm. just a tantrum that they didn't get their way, uh, and so they couldn't have a vote. The next time they decided to not have a secret vote, and so the people that were in charge of this whole synodal process, and this includes some bishops and cardinals as well, right? They decide that they're going to eliminate the secret ballot so that they can see who, who voted, voted how for, exactly, yeah. and so they're going to have another vote, and this is the real vote that counts. That's right, because the so first we, vote doesn't count anymore. No, it right? doesn't count anymore. That's and, <laughs> and so they're going to hold this other Are you vote. Seen the ridiculousness yeah. here. <laughs> so they're going to hold another vote, yeah. and then you have to like put up your hand or say a or whatever, so that we know who you are and how you voted so that we can why because you of course because you're going it's this bully to, mentality, it bully mentality it's like you're pressures on and so they did that and they got and yeah, then the, the decision was sort reversed. of reversed they got the 60 percent that they needed to go forward with, with the document with, with the document which two things i have a problem with number yeah. one this whole mentality which is really like uh, uh you know sort of rampant in our culture that yeah. the you know squeaky wheel always gets fixed makes, yeah you know what yeah. i mean like we're gonna we're gonna have a tantrum because we didn't get our Cancel way culture and yeah. then people sort of cave to that sort of noise, which number one is ridiculous. Number two, you know, shame on on the bishops who had to have their name attached to this vote yeah. and then change their vote because of the pressure. Yeah. I, I, I don't think that's that. I don't think that's a you know very. There, there's not a lot of integrity there. If no, I, if you're going to change because because you're doing it in front. Now, yeah. it, it, to to be honest though, the German Church has always been a cause of problems uh, from what the the teaching point of view. A lot of times they they teach. I'm going to say a more um, uh, progressive. Ideal ideology of the church uh, or how things could be taken, but they've always been kind of been on that cutting edge, if you will, and pushing things that outside of a certain boundary. But so the bishops have been teaching this way, not all the bishops. Again, there's some really good bishops there and good solid bishops yeah, in course. Germany. Um, but there were some that were teaching a certain way and pushing a certain way that like they basically tell the church. And we've had it here actually in our diocese where where uh, a bishop might come up and say something against the teachings of the Catholic Church and say, this is how it's going to change. I promise this, this is going to change. This is going to change. I'm going to bring this forward and we're going to get this changed in the church. Again, not respecting the way that doctrine is followed or whatever else, whether it be um, blessing homosexual unions, whether it be women priests, whether it be whatever the case may be. They bring it in, and then they teach towards that goal. And the only thing that they're up doing is changing the hearts of people around them, but that's not changing the teaching or the legitimacy or the doctrinal nature of the teachings of the church. And so there's nothing they can do other than they have a whole bunch of people behind them that protest because they've been teaching to them a certain way for a year, two years, three years, five years. So that's what kind of happened in Germany, I think. They kind of were, were pushing a certain mandate, a certain progressive uh, way of thinking, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden they didn't get their way, and okay, we're going to have a revote now because we didn't get our way, and we're going to make it everybody, and we're going to hold you accountable to it, and so on and so forth, and then they changed. Well, again, nothing changes in the Catholic Church. The doctrine is still the mm-hmm. same. This is just an idea of how you possibly could bring the Catholic Church's teachings to the people where they're at. This isn't to change the marital right this isn't to change you know what i mean so yeah Yeah, and to like this this may be kind of hair splitting at this point but um (laughs) which is kind of my specialty um (laughs) but that it's it's not as though things don't change so like in 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 our earlier episode when we talked about you know what what is what is doctrine what is dogma what is discipline so you know disciplines of the church can change the the church has reformed over time yeah um father was saying at the the very beginning of the episode that's like this was shocking two years ago you know this is shocking now i'm not especially shocked because like this was shocking 500 years ago yeah Um, (laughs) and like this this is the um um you know the pattern that um Protestantism, you know, kind of goes through um, in regular patterns throughout history. Right. Um, we'll see how this pans out uh, in this particular context. But this this mentality of you know um, <laughs> the king declaring himself the head of the church because he doesn't like what the church yeah. teaches, you know that that's that's pretty old hat at this point. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, you're right. I, but you have something like the Council of Trent in response to the Protestant Reformation. So yes. you have reform happening within the church to address, you know, some of these concerns, some of the ways that, you know, the world is changing. Yeah. Um, that, you know, how can we better, um, you know, um, 
communicate the timeless, unchanging doctrines of the church to a changing world. And, you know, you have in the 20th century, you have say, you know, modernism, you have, you know, a, a dramatic change in culture, dramatic change in the level of education of people, um, their expectations of family and social and professional and life. So you yeah. have the Second Vatican Council is like, okay, how can we get together? Yes. How can we in, like engage the world more effectively? And that um, was that was the time that yeah. we talked about so, the Vatican Council. Like most, uh, not most, uh, there are people still alive today that can remember the change of the Vatican Council. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that's something that happened recently, and major changes were done. Yes, yeah. so they so were. You have you have this attitude of you know positive reform of like how does the and like even even one of our most recent episodes like you know the the cha- the church recognizes that it's made mistakes in the past. Yes. You know the, the the human institution of the church is full of you know uh, humans who are imperfect um so you know the the church willing to kind of look back on its history and say like okay we need to update our policies in the area of you know uh giving people unrestricted access to children we need to update our policies in the way that you know the the church participates in government programs because there's a liability there like that that reform happens but again that's that's not affecting the divine institution of the church that's not um, impacting you know the doctrinal the theological the kind of the timeless and unchanging teachings of the church exactly just like you know you mentioned vatican two the second vatican council you know doctrine dogmas dogmas of the church were not Changed, Affected. you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, uh, one clarification I want to make, and then one I'm going to uh, throw a question your way, Matt, because I just wanted to clarify that, you know, because in all this thing, people that, who are listening might say, like, what is this crazy thing going on in Germany, and how come the Vatican hasn't done anything about it? Yeah. Well, the Pope actually spoke out against what's happening in Germany, right? And I, I believe just recently on an airplane home uh, was asked about it again, and he said, you know, I've said all I had to do, uh, I've said all I've had to say like, about that. Pro- changed <laughs> and, and, and so the, the the pope kind of warned that this is not the way to go okay so the the, the holy father did the address this out, yeah. and bishops across the world yeah. you know you look at the even bishops in the united states and bishops across the world have responded to the german bishops and saying hey you know stop stop this before it gets into a, it runs into a schism yeah. okay so that's my clarification my question is Matt, where does the German church get off, like, trying to change some of these teachings? Like, you know, so we have a universal church. So where is the structure in the church or what is the the thinking there that this national church, for example, yeah. you know, like we have our Canadian Conference of Catholic Bishops yeah. in Canada, so can that. you know, so where what authority does the, the, the national church of Germany even have? to be addressing this, uh, looking at adopting these things. Like how, how are they even in a position to consider yeah. that? Yeah, they're, and they're working on it. Like they're working on kind of attempting to adjust the structure of the church to decentralize that authority from the magisterium, from the, the Holy See. So you can see that as kind of like a, str- a strategic step along the way um, that, you know, there, and uh, again, throughout, uh, Pope Francis's pontificate, there's been a lot of discussion, some minor reform in the way that the, the authority is distributed at kind of the magisterial level, the diocesan level, and kind of the parish level, um, that, you know, this is an, an um, uh, <laughs> uh, there's a potential digression here. Um, <laughs> I see that your face. All that to say that, uh, like, the, the, the major uh, uh, thrust has been towards kind of decentralizing uh, some of the authority, giving more power to bishops, giving yeah. more power to conferences. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the short version. Um, mm-hmm. That you know, um, uh, but there's a danger there that you can localize power too much. That there can be you know a it's deviation. Yeah. So again, one of their proposals is that you know at a governance level, at uh, like at the authority level, you know the national German church should be allowed to, uh, you know self self dictate, self direct um, when you know it when there's this this much of a deviation from you know the central teaching of the church it's good that structurally the church still has the authority where um you know the, the holy see can issue a correction which which they did that yeah. you know they responded to uh, some of the draft p- proposals that that are yeah. being uh, that are coming out of this um german synodal way um to say that 
no, you, you, you don't effectively have the authority to propose changes to the governance of the church. You know, that, that's not, that's not in your purview. That's not in your scope. Um, so again, thankfully we, we still have that mechanism of change, but again, if, if a national church or if a national body, you know, tries to challenge that, um, you know, and they're unsuccessful and they persist, it could, it could result in schism, in schism, in separation in much the same way that, you know, the, uh, the Henry VIII uh, yeah. right. scenario exactly. that, I, that I mentioned before. That it, so it, classically, uh, like in, in uh, maybe not classically, but maybe traditionally, the the church in Germany itself is not like a flourishing church either, right? Like recently, yeah, there's been a lot now. of in in the past. In the past, yeah. sure. Yeah. But recently, there would be a lot of. I mean, maybe even like here in Canada. I don't know. Maybe not as drastic. I, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. But there have been there has been a sharp decline in yeah. the practice of Catholicism in Germany, right? And yeah. sort of the people who are saying the syn- synodal way is the way to go, are saying we have to catch up to the people who are leaving the church. Is that maybe fair to yeah, say? Yeah, it's, it's it's it is hard to speculate, but it can like there there is a case, and you could you could say this about a lot of uh, you know uh, the churches with within European countries, like and Canada as well. That you know you have this large um, kind of attrition. Uh, that's happened in in recent decades. That you know there can there can seem to be some pressure to like okay if people are leaving the church because you know the church doesn't accept same sex marriage because the church doesn't you know um, follow um, the ethos of the time. Um, that you know the way to get them back to the way to recover those parishioners is to modify church teaching because, yeah. you know, then we'll get them back. But, um, you know, just in terms of track record, um, a number of Protestant denominations have done just that. And it, it, it with little the, uh, response and, or... and sometimes the opposite effect. And what's really yeah. interesting too, is that for like actual Catholics who are still Catholic, I yeah. guess, I don't know the, the best way to say that, but, uh, you know, a poll, a recent poll shows that only 19, percent of catholics actually support like in germany sorry in germany yeah 19 percent of catholics in germany actually support this movement yeah. this synodal way right yeah, it, it makes i mean if you look at other look at our protestant brothers and sisters that allow like we talk this always comes up by uh, talking about marriage uh with uh mar- married priests or non-celibate priests or women priests or you look if if this was the big change that was going to change people from leaving the Catholic Church, if that if, if that's what we're mm-hmm. worried about, people leaving the Catholic Church. Now you gotta remember if you look at the numbers, we have people leaving the Catholic Church, but we have a lot of numbers being baptized and brought into the church as well. Yeah. The difference here is that we have people being baptized that aren't following through on their baptismal call, let's say, and just deciding to leave. So we have them on paper when they're, you know, two months old or three months old and and it's a cultural thing in Canada for the most part I think and then and then the parents don't follow through or whatever the case may be and and this child then is no longer living out that faith and so when we call on it 10 years later oh my goodness we lost these people we never had them yeah they were doing a cultural mm-hmm. thing they were doing a ritual they didn't understand the relationship um, but when we bring it back to we also have people coming in if this was the big time to change things the Anglican Church in Canada has been doing that. And I don't know, and I'm not, I don't want to speak mm-hmm. ill against them or not, but I don't. I think they're suffering the same faith as the Catholic Church. And it, like, even with having um, married priests and women priests and, and, and blessing uh, homosexual unions and that kind of stuff in the Catholic Church in Canada, I mean, in the, sorry, in the Anglican Church in Canada, nothing has really changed. They're not flocking, no, no one's flocking to them in droves or anything I can't say. And, and here's the deeper problem that yeah. I have. It's like, you know, the, the, the institution of the church is not ours to play with. Yeah. Like it is, it is the, it is God's church. It is, is the church that Christ founded. And yet, uh, like, you know, you're right, Matt, but in that perspective, like over the, you know, 500 years, it's been uh, people trying to change. tear away and change. The church needs things, to change. Right. Yeah. But yeah. today, especially it's it's kind of like what happened in that room in September when you know people were shouting and protesting and jumping it's like as a culture as a world we feel like if we do that loud enough we can change any institution where it's like well this is the, the holy church we're talking about we don't want i certainly don't want to be a disciple of a church who follows this culture 
No. You know what I mean? Like, there's so many things that could go wrong that way. And and to say that we're going to attract new people by following some of the Cancel garbage culture, yeah, yeah. And well, that's happening in today's culture, I think is just, you know, insanity. But but that's seriously how people think today. Well, yeah. I think, I think they think look, the church is a business. And, and so there, it's it's a me, 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 me culture. Yeah. And so, like, so the customer is always right. Exactly. So but this is not, what I want. Not realizing that there's a power or authority above them that are speaking. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's not about what I want. And, and if the sooner people start to realize that gift of life, you have free will, yes. Yeah. But you also are designed for a purpose in mind. And God has that purpose. So if you go back to God to ask what that purpose is, He's going to, you're going to be happier. You're going to be more fulfilled. You're going to be everything more so than you could possibly ever think of for yourself. But if you take, you know what I mean? So if it's, it's me, 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 I want it this way. I think it's better than this way. No, you got to submit. You've got to surrender to God, not the authority of the church. I mean, yes, to the authority of the church if you, if you understand that way of thinking, because I believe that the Holy Spirit leads the church that way. But specifically, if you surrender to God, and you uh, and you truly believe, as I do, and that as Catholics are supposed to, that the Holy Spirit guards and protects the church and the teachings of the church, right? The but that's precisely the problem. As, yeah. as we've removed God from the culture, as we've removed yes. God from our lives, we now see the institution of the church as this, what people say, man-made institution, yeah. right? We've removed God even from his own church. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so it's like we do have... You know, we should have a voice here. We should be able to change things because it's what we want, you know? Exactly. But, but that's a reflection of our society. Well, but that just shows yeah, that that's that our church should not, uh, you know, for people who are praying yeah. for our church, praying about the movement of the Holy Spirit, like it's insanity yeah, to yeah. think that we'll go the way of the culture. And this this is nothing new. Yeah, like, sure. This is going back <laughs> no, no, of like more than 500. Like even, yeah. like how, how did Christ encounter mob mentality? That is like you have these people, like you, even the claim that he's he's divine, that he's the son of God. People are enraged and they want to throw him off. A, he just quietly walks through the crowd is like this is not <laughs> this is not how you make yeah, get or, things or like, done or when he explains like or like uh, <laughs> in anticipation of the Eucharist like unless you drink my blood unless you eat my yeah. body you have no no part in me and you know people they stomp said, their the, feet and leave this is a hard teaching <laughs> yeah. I mean he just said you know actually just kidding because um, <laughs> yeah. he didn't want people no no he said no if, if this is hard, like you have free will like yeah. you can walk like I'm not going to compromise this teaching just because you don't, you don't like it or you know yeah. it's not a popular opinion and then when he turns to the disciples he's like what do you think yeah. you're gonna leave too like yeah like th this this is it, it's not it's not just uh, i'm i'm gonna yeah. I'm, I'm gonna flex here so that i can keep the numbers like that's no. not i think the other thing too, it goes back even farther than that it goes back yeah. to like i was thinking personally about the israelites and the time like like this is a time where where moses leaves for a little bit and the israelites decide okay we know what we want and they even force aaron into doing mm -hmm. what they want and aaron <laughs> forms this they want to worship this golden yeah. cow so they bring all the cow and they so the people decided that this is how they're going to worship meanwhile god has given moses some direction on a mountain exactly how he wants you know these commandments and everything else well he, moses comes down and like he's like what are you guys doing because you know so like this goes on people trying to change and tell god how we're going to worship that's the whole bible story i think yeah. right from the get-go is people trying to tell god this is how it goes and god's saying no i love you but this is how I want yeah. you to worship. This is how I want you. Like the whole Old Testament is about worship yeah. and, and direction to worship and how we can have that relationship with God. We follow that. We follow the Bible. We follow the tradition of the church. We follow that. And we're going to get into that. We're going to find God. Yeah. But we try to take our own way. We're only going to have a golden calf that, get, you know, that, that, that means nothing at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. So. And you can say, like, take it one further. It goes back to the garden. It goes back yeah. to the, like, yeah. 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 <laughs> one further. It goes back to the, the fall of Lucifer. Like yeah. th this is, this is the same problem that it's like, I know better. Yeah. yeah, and it's like, yeah, it's and good. then you know the answer is you're not God. I am. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, okay. I have to cut off our conversation yeah. here before we get in a schism with our production team because we are out of time <laughs> oh, here. Boom. But thank you uh, for this uh, discussion. If anyone has any comments about what we've talked about today, any clarifications or things you want to add or ideas for a future episode, send us an email at askus at the dot com. You can visit our website at the dot com or 
more, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Uh, for Josh Sullivan and Matt Van Milligan, my name is Father Daniele, and we will see you next time on The Catholic Buzz. Yeah.